back to another episode of WWX. That's wrestling with his daughter. It's think I need to feed you water with my motherfucking dog. It's your boy, the franchise kid, franchise Jerry. You already know what the fuck's going on. We're gonna discuss what's going on in this week's Raw. Let's get it, dog. Yes, sir, Ski. Now, this show was actually pretty interesting, and I'm not gonna lie, it had some nice tidbits to it. It started off with Kevin Owens coming out. And what do you think about that, bro? I thought it was funny because that followed JBL coming out and JBL talking about absolutely nothing and then introducing the last man to pin Roman Reigns, that being Baron Corbin. And for why, I have no clue. But anyway, Baron Corbin comes out, says absolutely nothing, puts KO to sleep, and that leads into their match. What would you think about their match? No. Later B. You know <laughs> I fuck with Baron Corbin. You guys clearly fuck with him to some degree because you keep repackaging him or putting him out there to where he's in these main event type matches because this is the main event to start off the show. We all know the most important matches in WWE as far as Raw goes. First match, second to last match, and the last match. So this is like a very important spot. Why the fuck are you putting Baron in here to lose? Like I'm tired of watching him lose I love and, and he got repackaged like to be a winner. And I, and I just think that this has to be like a, okay, he won a little bit, he's losing now, and Jay doesn't have to sit him down and be like, I didn't come apart part of this shit to lose, bro, so what are we going to do? Like, everything that matters to win? Yeah, I don't like JBL using that wrestling god term real loosely. Like, bro, you can't just be calling Barry Corbin that. He's never been a WWE champion or anything. So you saying that... And him losing not is, too legible. is making this shit look even more hilarious to me. And I just love when Monday Night Raw starts off with someone losing that I don't like. Like Baron Corbin. Great. What do you think about KO showing in this match? KO did what KO always do. Whoops, man. You know what I'm saying? So I couldn't hate. And he's really using that stunner every chance he gets. So, I mean, hey, I can't hate on it. Yeah, how do you feel about him using Stunner, though? At first, I, I think it's cool that he brought it back. Yeah. But I feel like he should do, like, a different variation of it or try to, like, you know, make it more innovative than how Stone Cold Steve Austin used to use it. I think that he's capable of that. And it's cool that he's paying homage to Stone Cold Steve Austin. As you see, I am today. I got my Fuck Fear Drink a Beer shirt on. So, yeah. How about you, bro? What you thought? I don't really like that he uses it, but I say so I do because it's Kevin Owens. If it was anybody else, then I used to make a creator wrestler on SmackDown when she was 2008. I gave my guy a stunner. I'm not going to lie. I had him behind Stunner 3 because I liked to kick him. <laughs> just hit him with that shit, you know what I'm saying? But I feel like KO stunners are good. I just, but at the same time, his pop a power bomb. I wish WWE didn't ban the muscle buster because, bro, he used to do that shit looking good. Imagine a pump dog. up stunner. Yeah, see, look, that know, would be cool. See, Kevin, we. Throwing it out there to you, man. Innovate to the move, but uh, I knew he was going to beat Baron because, like you said, Baron isn't a former world champ like Kevin is. So it's like, yeah, it's an obvious L. It you was know, a, you know, and it, I just hate it. It was an instant dub the moment Corbin walked out them damn curtains. I thought JBL was actually going to come out and talk about something. <laughs> I thought he was going to diss Kevin Owens some more, honestly. And I, I was kind of looking forward to it just because. JBL knows how to uh, desecrate somebody, no matter who it is. He's going to just disrespect you, put you down, make you feel small. He did it to the whole state of Alabama yeah. like nothing. He told them to get up off their overweight hooves and put their chubby little hands together <laughs> as he was introducing Barry Corbin. That shit was hilarious, bro. He's just like Jeff Jarrett. He come with them quick hot ones. <laughs> you know what to say. It's that Southern hatred they got, bro. Like, bro. Right. That like, South yeah, hatred. No, don't play with me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not for games, <laughs> but this but this KO victory led to the Usos coming out and definitely making the claim to be in the woods, whooping his ass. But he somehow was able to fed the ball with all those fucking chair shots, bro. Hey man, it looked believable to me. He was getting them off him with all them chairs. KO was just throwing random chairs He's like in, one back by in one. the corner, just like like an animal. Mm-hmm. And Adam Pierce. Thought he was kicking the uh, the Usos out after that. He wasn't because the new Usos was already leaving. And then he announced that 
he's going to be having a turmoil match to see who's going to be the next contenders for the WWE Tag Team Championships. And Solo's punishment is he's going to have to go against Dolph Ziggler. Show off. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Show like, bro, this lose. has got to be the lightest punishment in all of WWE history. You're putting Solo against Dolph Ziggler? For why? What did Dolph Ziggler do? <laughs> but we're going to have more coverage on that later on. Absolutely. You know, it's something that we just cannot forget to mention. We're just sick and tired of this weird shit from week in and week out. Alexa Bliss, why is she doing this? On the announce table, making claims, making these false and random accusations. She sounds like she's having delusions of grandeur. Like, none of the shit she's saying is coherent. And then she's saying, I'm the champ. Yeah, bro, I'm not feeling it myself. It looks like she's embracing this dark side more and more. And she's claiming that she's in control, but I'm just like, that's Cap. Like, you're not really running this shit. That's why Uncle Howdy came out and was all like, bitch, are you really in control? Do you really feel like you're in control? You know you <laughs> And after that, everything else got shut down after that. So it was like, yeah, I don't believe that she's in control one bit. At all, because honestly, it's just getting more and more out of hand. And she's, like you said, bro, the fact that she's going back to the dark side is kind of confusing herself in a sense because you're just making yourself normal. Now you're going back down this road going that kind back. of fucked your career up. And you don't have to. You could just be on some normal wrestling shit. You already, it's not like that that role made you a success story. That role derailed you. Yeah. And if you go back to what he was saying earlier, in the other podcast about being the goddess, it would help you because you're like you're leaning on the success that you had. And every time they hear goddess, they think, like, "Oh, yeah, when she was that gimmick, she did this. When she did that. This shit makes you think about everything you, you do with the fiend. Shit with this gimmick, like you don't do shit with this gimmick, but just do paranormal shit and be creepy. Like what the fuck? You don't you're not a mountain or nothing, and you swear you're gonna get a championship out of this, but. I don't know. And if they do give you one, it's not going to be believable. And it'll just be just because they haven't given you one in X amount of time. And because they have gave the Fiend one, they got to give you one type of shit. But I don't even see that title reign being long. Or being a profitable one for the company, so they might not even do it like that. Or being as good as any of your other title reigns as the Goddess. It's Some terrible. Creepy. Anyway, the next match was Bailey versus Mia Yim. And Bailey got a good win against Mia Yim, showing off her veteran skills. And I really couldn't hate on this, but what did you think about this match? Honestly, kind of confusing because even though we know Bailey keeps losing and she needs wins, kind of like Mia Yim is like, was supposed to be the problem solver to like Rhea Ripley. So, if that being said, why is she losing? Because she's a vet. That's what they was uh, highlighting the entire match was Bailey's just always one step ahead and she's got the veteran skills and That's she knows how to finesse. She be watching her lose to, uh, to uh, Bianca all the time. So it's just like... That Bailey that's said that true. she's not afraid to accept help. <laughs> that was her excuse, basically. She said she cool. She ain't afraid to accept help. Or get it how she got to get it. Okay, I can't. I don't her. support it, but hey, I don't support that shit. But I'm you, like, I can't the, doctor, Hey, so. she needs some wins. She needs some desperately, wins. clearly, because this is shit don't even. I was like, yeah, yeah, shit got this win because it could build her. Like WWE needs to be building as many stars as possible. Yeah, you guys waste a couple months on Bailey already. But imagine if Bailey would have lost this match. You would have been happy. Would have been on her helmet. Would on her. Would have been cooking her. <laughs> like, you just like, yeah, you can't afford to lose it. You gonna lay funny you. <laughs> as soon as she lose, I'm on her helmet because she gonna lose to a scrub. She gonna lose to a buster, and buster it's Bradley? just gonna be like, why are we? Why are we watching you, Bailey? Still here? You're not doing. Shit. Following this great veterans win by Bailey, we had the rookie. The kid, Austin Theory, in the interview segment, you know, he was proclaiming how it was the changing of the guard and what exactly happened, what's supposed to happen, because he's Austin Theory and his time is now. And some more just la 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 some foolery. Bullshit. Just foolery, just utter nonsense coming from his mouth. I'm just like, 
Oh, man, I was just taken back by this because I'm like, the audacity of you. You are no, who are you? You're, you got to keep saying your name all the time because if I turn this shit on and show anybody in my family or any, who, who is that? Like, it's not a, you're not a household name. They'd be like, is that Edge? <laughs> cut his hair? Yeah, I remember he cut his hair, he act that right. <laughs> He still get title? He was always trying to point out Edge to me. I'm like, no, that is not Edge. Any evil bad white guy, Edge. That's him. <laughs> Wait, what do you think about this segment with Austin, man? I'm happy Seth Rollins came out and stopped that whole rant and basically showed that his knee isn't as bad as we thought it was, and he'll be back by the time Rumble comes around. So... And I also got to mention how he didn't mention that he's coming back to fight Austin Theory. You know what I'm saying? He only mentioned the Rumble. And what comes from the Rumble? WWE Championship comes from the Rumble. So hopefully that's where his sights are set. I would hate to see him win the Royal Rumble and then challenge Austin Theory. Wouldn't that be some head-ass shit? I don't think he would do Just that. because they're trying to add more prestige to the title or just something that I would just be sick as fuck. And then Roman just gets away unscathed. Yeah, it just would be bad. So anyway, I'm glad that Seth is setting his sights towards bigger things because that's what he should be doing, bro. He's better than Roman. It's time for him to show it. Yeah, I'm waiting to see him show it. Until then, he has to acknowledge his tribal chief. And just sit back and just be second fiddle for now. Tell me. Next up on Monday Night Raw, we got Rhea Ripley and the Poison Pixie, Candice LeRae. And there's not much to even say about this. Mommy whooped her ass, and I ain't going to cap. She she really beat the brakes off that girl. And now she has more momentum going into Royal Rumble. Everybody's saying that she's the clear-cut favorite, bro. What do you think? That's my pick. I've been saying that she's going to win the Women's Royal Rumble 2023, and she's going to mm. step on everybody because it's what's Brain injury, 22. No, it's time to show everybody why I'm dominant, why I'm the one, why I'm putting in all these reps in the fucking gym. Who Me. is she going to go after? Charlotte or Bianca? Uh, I'm going to be honest with you. It's, it's a toss-up. I see, feel like she would want to get payback on Charlotte. Charlotte. I feel like she might go for Charlotte just because to show her, like, you think you're the best. I'm going to show you that I'm the dominant one. Yeah. And it's, you're, that would be like some real changing of the guard shit. The only reason that I feel like she might go against Bianca is because Raw wants to, because usually Raw tries to have like the fresher, new faces being in the main event. And you know what I'm saying? Mm. Like, I could see them trying to be like, okay, the athletic one and the, the just the strong ass one. It just makes sense because both of these girls wrestled in NXT and they came out of the same, you could say, NXT class. And that would be a great story in itself. And I feel like Rhea, she, her WrestleMania moment was kind of, because there was nobody in attendance. You know what I mean? And then mm. the match, and then the one before that, Charlotte beat her for her title. She went to challenge her in NXT. So it just like, yeah, Charlotte, she got to get some paid back. Yeah. And I love that WWE took it off of uh, Raw the right now because that gives me excited to see when Charlotte ate a WrestleMania, like, WrestleMania, when WrestleMania time comes around, you want to see Charlotte Flair defending it. Or just in the title picture, period, because it just yeah. makes sense. You know, ever since WrestleMania 32, when they had that triple threat match uh, with her, Sasha, and Becky, and obviously Charlotte won. And that's when we got the new design of this women's championship. It just makes sense to have her in that, in that moment. She's yeah. always been known to show up and show out. Yeah. And I feel like that would be a good change of scenery for Rhea is to go over there on the SmackDown brand. She had to leave the judgment day, or, or, you, or she gonna bring her puppy. <laughs> She's probably gonna have to leave the judgment day. But it's cool if she does it with a championship, because she'll be the first one to obtain gold in the judgment day. Yeah, for real. Unless the judgment day end up beating the Usos, and we'll have more coverage on that later on in that tag team tournament oil match. Holy for shit show. The following segment was a backstage moment between Bobby Lashley and MVP. And MVP reveals that he's the one that actually got Bobby Lashley reinstated. 
But Bobby Lashley is not trying to work with him. Not at all. Not after what happened last time. So hopefully, if they do bring back the Hurt Business, the other members won't be on bullshit. But what do you think about them trying to reassemble the Hurt Business? I don't really like it. Like, I know it was a dominant black group, and they didn't really get a fair shake. Because like I said previously, through COVID, no attendance. But they're just not it. And Cedric is... Cedric's only known for being on the screen right now, praying that Bobby will accept him so that way he gets screen time. And then Shelton, when he's on screen, he's gassed. He's fucking being beat up. He's losing the dominant material. He's built He's at that stage in his career where he's solely put out there, take the pen, Sheldon. You're a credible wrestler. Build a young talent. He can use his momentum. And, and he's not even him. that credible because all he's ever won was the IC belt. And everybody's won that fucking belt. A hey, tag team title. That's it. It's going to mean just as much to him as it would if Dominic won it today. Jeez. That's saying a lot. Well, see, so I don't like them reassembling this group, bro. And I feel like Bobby, like, if they want to link, I feel like they should link Bobby and Omos and then, like, go from there. Yeah, bro, like, what the fuck? MVP, you cool with Omos. That... That's how you get the hurt business back together. That's what I would have started off with. Look, I got Omos, and we can just put the rest together. All right, like you know what I'm saying. We got a boom because I take he can replace Sheldon and uh, and Cedric in one. Like that's way better than having both of them. Yeah, for sure, bro. He can make he could like introduce Omos by surprise whooping their asses. Yep, and then add one more piece. Yeah. All you would need is one more piece after that. Then you got tag team champions, and then you also got uh, Bobby Lashley as a champion. Yeah, because I like stables like that where it's like a three piece. Because, like, look at the shield. Like, somehow, some way, you, they put together Roman Reigns and, Sh- and Seth Rollins were a fire ass to tag team together, bro. <laughs> then they had Dean Ambrose as the United States champion. It was really cool to see. Like, I was like, that makes sense. Like, that group was about anarchy. So it's like, they don't necessarily have to worry about be having that main title yet. Yeah, they still were in their own little thing, and like everyone know they were like a serious threat. And at the same time, it's not like they weren't champions or anything like that. You right. know what I mean? I remember it took Cody Rhodes and Goldust to beat them, which is crazy. Yeah, I wonder. I think Seth took the pin on that one. Cody even beat Seth in the thing. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> It's always been believable. I don't know what everyone's been saying. Like, ooh, surprise, surprise. Who who was getting these pins? Goldust wasn't getting these pins. Now, guys, it's time for some more comic relief. We got Dom, Dom Ziggler taking on Solo Sokoa. Now, bro, what did we really think was going to happen from this match? What did Adam Pierce think? That, how was this a punishment? Who was he trying to punish? Got to be Dolph. It had to be Dolph. You don't like Dolph. Dolph was better off tag teaming with Mustafa Ali. And he came out looking crazy, too. I understand why Dolph didn't want to, but he was still better off with that versus this ass whooping that Solo produced. Like, this was a vicious assault on Dolph Ziggler. And I love how they highlighted that Dolph Ziggler is a former heavyweight champion. Yeah, highlight that. I like how he is doing him bad and how Dolph Ziggler should have never held that belt to fucking begin with. He only got that belt because of fucking Vicky Guerrero. He was over there tonguing her down and all type of freaky ass shit to get it. So he was fired from the jump. So this ass whooping was well-deserved and was a long time coming. And it was in the works. It was in the works for the jump. You've been needing this ass whooping. It ain't nothing wrong with a little bit of straightening. Like not at all, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because I remember that just like yesterday when he won that uh, world heavyweight title that put Vicky, and then Edge came out and speared him and just took it back. I was like, yeah, yeah. You're a bitch, you don't deserve that. Plus, <laughs> the solo hitting with the him with that pop up spike was crazy. Yeah, bro, I'm not gonna lie, the pump up spike. Now that's tough. Like now, that's what I was talking about. Like if you're gonna do the Samoan spike. And have it as your finisher, you need to switch it up and make it yours. You know what I'm saying? Basically, like what I was saying about Kevin Owens. You know what I'm saying? The pump up Samoan spike is vicious. I'm not going to lie. Like, that looks crazy. So, if Solo can incorporate that in his moveset, 
more often, like I would be more entertained by that versus just seeing that old 2009 Samoan spike because I don't believe it. And now it's time for the main event, Monday Night Raw. A tag team 12 round match to define the number one contenders for the Usos Championship. Yes, sir. The OC versus the Judgment Day versus Cedric and Sheldon versus the Alpha Academy versus the Street Profits. A whole lot of motherfuckers in this match. This match was pretty cool. I like how it highlighted each team's, like, uh, how could you say, like, it factor in a sense, like, Alpha Academy has that comedy, but at the same time, they're real technically sound. And Otis has that power, and he just says a lot of funny shit when he's wrestling. And yeah, then you he got. He always got me cracking up. And then you got the Street Profits. You see Montez, and you can say Dawkins Athleticism too, because he did a cold ass front flip landing on his feet after he took out somebody on the outside of the ring. And you got Montez doing flips over the fucking ring post from inside the ring. And you don't expect someone of his stature to be doing flips like that. So it's just definitely crazy to see. Yeah. The only team I wouldn't say was highlighted, maybe only Shelton. Shelton looked good out there. He Shelton did. was looking good, bro. He was hitting back to back German suplexes. He was hitting a lot of moves, but then I don't I don't know how I feel about Cedric. Cedric was looking like out of shape, like he ain't been wrestling in a while. Cedric looked just horny to be in the ring. He just looked super frisky. Couldn't wait to just grapple a nigga up. He was like, I'm on Monday Night Raw in the main event. <laughs> <laughs> you can just see it. They said I'd never make it. They never said I'd never be back. They <laughs> said it's because of COVID. <laughs> but look at me now. <laughs> I'm in a tag team, see? Bro, he is jokes. Cedric is jokes. Bro, his best match ever was on the pre show of WrestleMania when he was a Cruiserweight champion and he retained his title. Right. It's a damn shame, too, because he had women potential in that. And that was years ago. Years ago. I want to say it was like 2018. I thought he was going to tip because that's how long it was. <laughs> this is like, what have you done for me lately, Cedric? Nothing. Right. So you could tell he got eliminated. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good way to bring it back. <laughs> so then on Send Force, so you know the. Old business got hurt because he's watched just like Shelton. Uh, and then I believe, oh, this we can't men- we cannot forget to mention Dominic Mysterio has a whole new attire and swag, guys. He came out here and put in a fucking <laughs> off white flannel that the only button to top up because he chewed by Ese Vato Loco, gave us some shade, the purple bandana over his nose, and just. <laughs> He, and we cannot forget a teardrop, a newly painted on teardrop, because you know he's not really tattooing that shit. Got tattoos everywhere, but he's like, you know, I'm not really doing that. Bro, you know it's hilarious how the flannel kind of distracts you from his knees kissing. <laughs> the flannel and the glasses completely take my <laughs> vision off the kneecaps kissing, because it's just like, yo... He just looks like he could not walk correctly. He he walked like this. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just like, yeah, the flannel works. The flannel and glasses, that works for you, yeah, bro. That's good. I like that Dominic is just straight jokes now. Like, nothing he says... I believe, like, it, it just always leaves me with damn near tears in my eyes. And it don't help that Corey Graves always got something slick to back it up. That, look, Corey, look, I, don't, I can't hate on Corey, bro. Even though he be annoyed, he got some funny ass shit Remarks. to say, bro. Always, and he quick with him. They do a good job really trying to build up Dom as much as they can. I just hated how this match ended overall, though. Because Finn Balor's ribs get crushed because for whatever reason he decided to hold on to Chad Gable and let Otis do a splash on him. And he looked like he probably broke a rib. So that allowed Dominic Mysterio to enter into this match. From there, I did not expect Dominic to fucking win this match overall for the group and Rhea kind of help set in the pin or whatever. You know what I'm saying? I just didn't expect it to go that way, but I did expect the Judgment Day to win. Um, if we being for real, though, 
I'm not fucking with the street profits always coming up short. But I guess the only positive thing is they won't be losing to the Usos no more. For at least for now. Because I'm... That shit is just getting played out. I'm tired of seeing that shit. Everybody knows that they're the best fucking tag team in both divisions. So it's just crazy to see, bro. How do you think the Judgment Day, Dominic and Damien, will fend against the Usos? I don't. I don't. I don't think they'll fend at all because we the one. Come on, man. It's out of relevancy. You think they're gonna get let them break up the titles and give it on? Hey, they could do it, but I don't see. I don't see the Usos being like the downfall to the bloodline. Just start trickling down because whoever loses starts losing gold. It's gonna it's gonna cause a problem. Overall, Raw had a good show this week. I think even though the turmoil match didn't go the way I wanted it to go, Raw still was entertaining and it kept my attention. What do you think about the show, bro? Honestly, I think the show is pretty dope. I can't lie. Uh, it's pretty funny seeing that how far they're going with the Dominic shit. I can't. I cannot lie, bro. It's just interesting to see him like develop more as a character on screen, but like his in ring work still needs that improvement. I can't. I can't say it doesn't. It, it's yeah. It's kind of like they're pulling it off because he's picking his spots. Like you know what I'm saying, and doing little bullshit to win matches i feel like he that's has, why i said he needs to go back to it he needs to go to nxt so that way he can actually develop i feel like he doesn't have enough um in ring like moments they kind of use the fact that he's a, that he has a lineage of being Rey Mysterio's son but he doesn't spend as much time as Ray spent in the ring you know what i mean yeah like in WWE, Ray's personality kind of developed backwards yeah you can tell Rey he, Mysterio has mucho ring time bro. yeah the fact that Dom doesn't have any of that is just like it's disheartening in a sense, and he he just has to play what's what's good to him, but it's just kind of it just sucks because you just want you want him to be somewhat near them, but he doesn't have the technical yeah. he is not a technical wrestler and he can't fly as good as Ray, and he doesn't have the build nowhere near the he build. doesn't he like it's like work ethic wise you know like he should try to learn from like Damian Priest and Finn because they're in pretty good shape to like. You definitely need to like improve just to just so you could have a more believable time in wrestling and more uh, marketability. It's like how are you guys gonna depict him fresh out of jail and shit and you're not working on his body or anything. Usually when you're in jail, you come out buff and all type of shit. Like you guys are missing all the aspects that you really need for him. And that's one of the main aspects is reshaping his fucking body because his fucking like I, I just showed y'all how he'd be coming out to the ring like he'd be coming out looking like a a, a bird off some x lax <laughs> i don't even know he just be coming out looking crazy with his knees kissing so <sighs> you guys need to make sure he's working out and changing his body structure because that shit is not selling no not at and all it don't look right when he do wrestling moves this shit look crazy, cause he it looked like the it always looked like whoever's selling for him is pacing himself, catches catches off timing. Right. But he is he did win this match, and he is going on to face the Usos with Damien. And it's I just want to mention it was hilarious the fact that Damien called told him before this match started when he had to replace Finn, they'll be soft. <laughs> And Rhea was like, had a check of like, hey, chill, chill. Like, because yeah. she knew it was true. Right. It was like, man, like, the simple fact that Damien has to tell him that mm -hmm. goes back into everything that I just said. You guys got to really develop his character correctly, send him back to NXT, make him change his entire body structure, get him right. Like, you know what I'm saying? Get him back on track. Because right now, he's not believable doing shit. At all, besides just being funny. Yeah, he is hilarious. I think he called him the Pete Davis of the WWE. <laughs> he just be knowing how to say shit with a straight face, and that's what be making me bust up the most. Because I'm like, wow, he really, he. I can't tell if he believes that or not. <laughs> <laughs> and that's been another great episode of Wrestling with Exotics. With think I need a Fiji water.
Hey, your boy, the franchise kid, franchise Jerry. Make sure you guys also like, comment, and subscribe, man. Share that shit with the world, y'all. And make sure you turn on your post notifications so you know every time we drop a track. Thank y'all for smoking with us, man. Peace.